Hello and welcome back to another HitFilm tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can add a Star Destroyer into the sky of your scene. I will be doing this inside of HitFilm Pro version 14 because I do need to use the camera tracker by the Foundry. However, if you want to do a 3D camera track using HitFilm Express, there is a card on screen to a video that I made about how you can create a 3D camera track using Blender and HitFilm. So, let's get on with this tutorial. First thing that you're going to want to do is import your footage. I've got this footage that I just quickly filmed of the sky with some trees and whatnot. So what I'm going to do from here is right click and select make composite shot. I'm going to call this star destroyer in the sky or something and then I'm going to set the duration to 5 seconds because I just want to have a 5 second long shot of the star destroyer in the sky. However if you want to have this being longer or shorter then you can and it's completely up to you. I'm then going to leave all of the other settings the same apart from I'm going to change the frame rate to 30 and then I'm going to press OK. So now in the timeline I have got my footage in a new composite shot. I am just going to go into the layer properties and checkbox the mute. So now what I need to do inside of this new composite shot is create a 3D camera track. So in the effects tab I'm going to search for camera track and uh, the foundry will pop up and we have the camera tracker by the foundry. So I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the footage layer, go over to the controls tab, open up the camera tracker settings and then under solve I'm going to change the camera motion from free camera to rotation only because most of this shot is rotating and it's not too much of a free camera I'm going to go back to the start of the timeline and then I'm going to press track features and this will go ahead and track through all of this shot it will go forwards once and then backwards In my shot that I have here, there are a couple of points that are a bit in the middle of nowhere because I don't quite know what that is tracking and it disappears a few frames later. Okay, so as you can see, we have a couple of points that are in the middle of nowhere and I don't quite know what that was meaning to track. So I'm just going to select it, go to Camera Tracker, go to Tracks, and then Delete Selected. And that will just delete that stray point and I'm just going to scrub through to make sure that there are no other stray points then if there are I'm going to select them and delete them. Okay so now that I've done this I'm going to select solve camera in the foundry camera tracker then after it's gone through to solve your camera you want to select create scene And now what this has done, it has created a camera and it has created a 3D point. The 3D point just kind of controls where the center of the world is and the camera has all of the transform settings that your real camera would have. So now all we need to do is add the Star Destroyer in and composite it into this shot. So all we have to do is drag your Star Destroyer image, or if you're using a 3D model, drag that into the timeline. Then you want to convert this over to being a 3D plane. Then I'm just going to parent it to the camera point that was created, null object one. And then I'm going to right click and select reset. Then I'm going to stop parenting it. And then under position, I'm going to start dragging it back in 3D space. One issue that you might notice is that it is upside down, so to fix this I'm just going to change the rotation Z over to being 180. This will just flip it the correct way up. So I'm just going to drag this even further back in 3D space. Somewhere around negative 8000 should work. And then I'm just going to scale this up. I want this to be fairly large. And I'm also just going to move this up in the frame. So now this is tracked into the shot and moves with the camera. So that works. Now what I'm going to do in the effects is search for grading transfer. And I'm just going to try and blend this into the shot a bit more. So with grading transfer, I'm just going to drop, drag and drop this onto the Star Destroyer PNG. And then under the grading from, I'm going to select the footage layer. That's done it a bit too much because it's picked up on the amount of blue that is in the sky and applied that to all of the light areas on this model. 
So under the global transform, I'm just going to turn down the brightness shift and also just turn down the chrominance shift. And then under the highlights transform, I'm going to do the same. And the same for the midtones. Now what I'm going to do is create a circular mask on this layer so that then we can create some fake depth. So with the, circ with the circular mask tool, I'm just going to drag a fairly large shape that just kind of encompasses the top half and the front of the Star Destroyer. And then under the mask's shape settings, I'm going to increase the feather strength. Something fairly high, because we don't want this to be like completely invisible, but we just want to simulate some form of depth of the like atmosphere and clouds and stuff. Something around 330 works fairly well. And now I've kind of created this fairly nice fade out. Then under the Star Destroyer settings I'm going to change the opacity of this layer to 65 and that kind of makes it slightly more subtle. I'm also just going to search in the effects tab for lens blur and now I'm going to simulate kind of like a slightly out of focus look because if this were a real element in the scene your camera probably wouldn't be able to focus on it very well. So, under the radius settings, I'm going to change this down something around 5. Just giving it a slight lens blur. I do just want to decrease the amount of shadow that is seen on this model. So, under the effects tab, I'm going to search for curves. And I'm going to drag and drop this onto the Star Destroyer layer. And then I'm just going to increase the brightness of some of the shadows. And now we're about done. If you wanted to, you could add a final grade layer. I'm just going to drag a letterbox onto this new grade layer, and then just do a very basic curves adjustment, just to increase the amount of contrast. And then I'm also going to search for the saturation, and drag hue saturation and lightness onto this. And then under the cyan, drop down the saturation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future videos and tutorials, then please tell me in the comments below, because I would love to find out what you want to know how to do inside of HitFilm. Also, if you have any questions, then please, once again, feel free to ask. And if you want to check out more stuff that I'm working on, then follow me on Instagram at ndpproductions underscore workshop. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Goodbye.